Hey folks, how you guys doing? Hope you're all having a great day today. Uh, it's a little bit later in the week than when I normally do these videos, when I actually normally do these vlog videos. Uh, but I've had a few setbacks, rolling through them quite well. Just got a lot of stuff going on. So first on my list, I have the uh, past projects video that I published on my main channel on YouTube. Um, there's four things in there that I forgot to mention. Number one was a bandsaw scoop that I made. I got this idea originally from Patrick's workshop on YouTube, so check out the original video to that. I'll have a link for that. Um, but a little bandsaw scoop that I made. I use it for dog food. I've been using it for dog food since I made it, and it's holding up just fine. It gets used, well, it gets used twice a day, seven days a week. <laughs> Uh, the second thing on my list that I forgot to add was my 2x4 benches. Uh, I have a set of 5 foot benches that I made. I made these out of pressure treated wood um, 7 years ago, 6-7 years ago. It's been a long time and since then my wife has applied a an opaque um, red colored stain to them that she really likes for our outdoor furniture. And yeah, they're holding up just fine. I've got one of these that is 100% exposed to the elements and it has been its entire life and then I've got one that we keep on our front porch and it is uh, under a covered porch obviously so it's holding up a little bit better but not by much. Um, that uh, particular finish by the way I, if I've got it I think I've got a can I'll, I'll put, a, put it on the screen so you guys can see what we're actually using with good results by the way. Uh, the next thing I forgot to mention in that video was the outside table that I made just a very small um, low material quantity table, just a very small side table uh, out of hickory. And I think I sprayed a water-based polyurethane on it. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong on that. Um, but I don't think the water-based polyurethane is, is rated for exterior use. However, it is under a covered porch, so it's not really getting rained on. And it just it just honestly needs to be cleaned and probably painted. It's, it's kind of ugly right now. <laughs> due to lack of maintenance more than anything. Because everybody, all of us, we all are on top of maintenance, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, the next thing is a what used to be an outdoor cabinet. Uh, this was originally made for my front porch for like, you know, like bug spray and stuff like that. And, and you know, a little table for UPS to drop off a package or something like that. My wife ended up liking it enough that we moved it inside. And now this particular table is right next to our dining table and it is where we house our board games down below because we play sorry the board game sorry every time we eat dinner together uh, it's kind of our little thing that we've been doing since we got married well since before we got married and yeah so the tables are the cabinet is holding up just fine however i do want to replace the top with something else that will match the replacement top that i've yet to make for the bookcase which is on the other side of my dining room so i figured i'd mention those i forgot to add those to that video uh, let's see. Next up, I got a shed. Um, I live in a part of the country where we don't really have to worry about um, frost heave from the, the ground freezing and lifting structures too much. So these portable buildings or portable sheds are extremely common and they're relatively inexpensive. And when you figure in the cost of labor and the time it, create, time it takes to make one of those, for me in my position, it just made much more sense to just buy one and have it delivered the next day and I can immediately use it. It's something that I've been wanting for a couple of years now to ha to store some materials in because I live quite a ways away from every material so source that's that's you know decent. Um, decent plywood for me is an hour and an hour and 15 minutes one way. Um, I've got two lumber suppliers now. One is uh, an hour and 10 minutes north of me. The other's in Birmingham, Alabama, which is three hours east of me. So it makes sense to buy a little bit more than what I need and have it on hand. And I don't know if you can see it, but up here on the miter saw station, you can see it, yeah. Uh, I've got some hickory left over in here, and that's pretty much all the material storage that I want to keep here in the shop. Maybe a little bit here and there throughout the shop, small, smaller stuff, but I was completely covering up one corner of my shop with some longer stuff and then I got a bunch of eight quarter materials that I, I really don't have a place for it so uh, it just made sense to get another shed and put it out back and that way I have a decent amount of dry storage that I can store all of my um, bulk hardwoods that I that I seem to be getting and then also if I need to go say get 10-15 sheets of plywood for an upcoming larger project which I might have to do then I have a place to put them that they're not in my way in my shop so that's that 
Um, next up on my website, I don't know if you guys know, but whew, I'm sweating. It is hot in here. I've got the door open. Did I say that? I don't know if I said that, but I got the garage door open because I've been spraying some stuff. It's hot and humid. Um, yes, shop tours. I've been publishing a few shop tours on my website. I'm starting to get back into um, wanting to get back into highlighting other people's shops because it promotes the craft, it promotes other people's content, and it also gives us a glimpse into what is working for other people so that we can get some ideas from it. So uh, I've got two of those already published and I've got two more on the way. I was supposed to publish one this past Tuesday, but some things happened that I don't really want to get into uh, that they kept me away from a computer. Anyway, um, so next week we'll pick up with another one on Tuesday and I've already got another one after that. I think two more after that actually. And then if anyone out there wants to have their shop featured on my website, then uh, contact me, put feature my shop in the subject of the email, j at jayscustomcreations.com or jayscustomcreations at gmail.com. Either one, they go to the same place. And uh, I'll get the ball rolling for you to um, feature your shop on my website. And if your shop does get featured on my website, then you get a free shirt or a free hat. So I've got this particular black hat or this tan hat. And speaking of shirts and hats, I've got a bunch of them for sale on my website as well. And I w under, or I, I misjudged something. I got both of these particular colored hats, the tan hat and then this black hat. I keep this one with my microphone. So basically if I'm talking into the camera, I'm gonna be wearing a black hat. Um, but I've got both of these and I figured that these would sell better, but I was completely wrong. These have been selling out or selling a whole lot better than this. So I'm running out of these. If you want one, now's the time to get it. But yeah, those are on my website. If you've purchased one, thank you very much. I also have two other completed videos ready to go that I have not wrote the article to just yet. So there's some other stuff that's being published. Number one is a, uh, <laughs> a quick tip video for hand planes. Now, I accidentally published the video because Premiere Pro messed up. I used Premiere Pro to edit and I checked, I know for certain that I checked to to publish it on YouTube as unlisted. However, it just published it as public. So it uploaded it and I think 1,500 people or 1,500 views uh, watched it before I figured out what happened and I just went ahead and unlisted or deleted it rather. So I have to re-upload it. But anyway. Um, that video is coming. The article for that video is coming. I don't know exactly when either that one or another one will be sometime early next week, I think. Uh, the other video is an engraver slash a CNC machine product tour video. So I'm starting a series. I don't know how many of that I'll do um, or how regular the series will be, but a product introduction series where I uh, introduce a product that I've never used before and answer the simple question, does it do what is advertised to do? And there's some giveaways associated with some of them. Some of them there's not. I've got three lined up. Um, one of them for sure is a giveaway, and that is the little mini engraver CNC. And you've probably seen some images and video of it, maybe some video of it on my Instagram if you've been following me there. Uh, but that is coming out soon as well. Um, next up, the project that I'm currently working on, and I'm very close to being done. I should have published this this past Sunday, but I had weather, uh, weather not cooperating with me for the finish, and then also uh, I had to learn something. I, I had some problems that I had to straighten out. So that is the dog bed slash table for my office remodel. I'm completely remodeling my office, basically just painting it and building stuff to go in it. <laughs> That's basically the remodel. Uh, but anyway, the, the, my dogs have to have a dog bed in there. That's non-negotiable. Um, it's it's too hot to leave them outside during the middle of summer where we live, and we don't want to leave them in the outside during the middle of winter where we live. So they basically sleep inside at night, and the office is the only room that can accommodate the dog bed as far as our house layout. So I figured to utilize the floor space of a dog bed to actually make a high bar height table and then the lower shelf is going to be the dog bed. So I'll have a lot, I'll have that entire footprint as usable space. However, the dogs can use it down below. So win-win situation. I've got that project pretty much done. All of the joinery is done with the Panto router, some big, um, big double mortise and tenon joints. And it's kind of sort of knocked down as well. So it's, I'm trying to make it a little bit interesting and also fit the needs for the space. But 
for the finish, I wanted to spray on some white lacquer, and I had rain, um, just just uh, just enough rain to piss you off. Just a little sprinkles here and there to stop you from actually doing what you want to do outside. The weather is not cooperating with me this summer, so that delayed it quite a bit. And then once I did start spraying, I had some um, issues with what I was doing with the sprayer. Nothing nothing wrong with the sprayer or the product. It was just me, something that I had to figure out. So I've been doing some research and and contacting some people and um, fixing that, fixing what I was doing wrong. And I just finished the final coat t today, so I have to let the garage door open and with the fan going and let it air out for at least a day or so before I can start working on it again and finish it up probably tomorrow morning. And speaking of fan, it's not running because of the audio and it is so hot. So I'm going to cut this video off right here and get back into the air conditioning and edit this video so you guys can watch it Thursday morning. You guys take care, have a great day, and I'll see you, I'll talk to you in the next video.